we will answer those questions throughout our presentation as well. This evening, we have an hour to share information with you. And again, we'll make sure to address your questions as well. But to get us started, we do have more than 80 majors at the University of Washington. Those majors range in a wide variety of areas, and you can access a full list of our majors on our website. And you can actually filter that majors list by type of major and area of interest as well. So it's a really great starting point at the UW if you're not familiar with our majors or you don't know what major you would want to study at the University of Washington. This evening, we're going to talk about our type of majors as well. So I'll have my colleagues dive deeper into the types of majors available at the University of Washington, but we do have three types of majors. Those majors are open, minimum requirements, and capacity-constrained programs. So we'll talk a little bit more about what those type of majors mean and how you can indicate your area of interest on your coalition application. This presentation is going to be specific to freshman applicants, and we are hopeful that we can guide you through how you can indicate your areas of interest through the coalition application. But from here, I'm going to kick it over to my colleagues to introduce themselves, and then we'll get started with the rest of the content. Great, thanks so much, Aubrey. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Ben Siegel, and I'm one of our admissions counselors here at the University of Washington. I'm a UW alum, and I graduated in 2016 uh, with a major in geography and a minor in education, learning, and society. So glad you all can join us tonight, and I'll pass it off to my colleague, Joe. Thanks, Ben. My name is Joe Franco. I am an admissions counselor here at the University of Washington. Um, thank you all for joining us tonight. Uh, I also am a UW alum. Um, I graduated back in 2013, so uh, go dogs! And uh, my major was in politics, philosophy, and economics. And I'll kick it over to Kelsey. Good evening, everyone. My name is Kelsey Mark, and I serve as the senior admissions counselor at the University of Washington. I am also a UW alum. I graduated in 2012, um, and I majored in American Ethnic Studies with minors in education, learning, and as well as uh, a minor in diversity. Great. Thanks so much, Kelsey. So I just want to get us started and talk about open majors, one of those three major categories that Aubrey mentioned earlier. Um, open majors, these are open for students to declare at any time after they're admitted to the University of Washington. So when you're ready to declare your open major, if you're interested in doing so, um, you can check in with an advisor and complete the necessary steps, be it filling out paperwork or whatnot. Um, once you declare an open major, just know if you change your mind, you could potentially switch down the road so you're not locked in once you declare that open major. Um, there's lots of resources and support for students be checking in with advisors, going to information sessions, or taking intro level classes um, that allow students to explore a wide variety of major pathways so you can make that um, educated decision if you're planning to declare an open major. Um, so a few examples that we have here of open majors are French, marine biology, earth and space sciences, and we have a full list of all our open majors on our website as well. Fantastic. Thanks. Thanks, Ben. Oh. I'll uh, go back here. Um, the majors that I'm going to talk about are minimum requirements majors. And so um, usually these majors here at the University of Washington have additional requirements that you need to meet for um, admission into their specific program. So once you're a student at the UW and you meet the minimum requirements, uh, you can be admitted uh, without further screening into your specific program. So for example, we have a couple examples listed here as history. Uh, microbiology and political science, and uh, you'll be able to meet with an academic advisor within that specific program, and then they should be able to help you in terms of applying into um, that specific uh, major. So um, there are um, there are uh, no additional requirements usually for minimum requirements majors. Once you meet that minimum requirements, you are good to go. Great, thank you, Joe. And I'm gonna be talking about capacity constrained majors. These majors are competitive and they usually have additional requirements as well as a selective screening, which typically includes an additional application process. Um, please note that completing the minimum UW admission requirements does not guarantee admission. So again, these are majors that are competitive and they're looking for competitive applicants. Um, with the exception of computer science and engineering, you can apply to any of these majors once you are at the UW as a current UW student. 
Um, one thing I do want you all to understand about capacity constrained majors is that different capacity constrained majors have different prerequisites or different um, requirements, as well as different acceptance rates. So for example, here we have biology, which is one of the more popular programs at the University of Washington. Biology is a capacity constrained major. They have specific uh, prerequisites like a biology series, a chemistry class, um, but they have about a 90% acceptance rate into the program. Um, informatics is also a capacity constrained major. They have their specific prerequisites like an informatics course, English composition, usually some type of computer programming class and a statistics course. Um, and uh, their, their admission is a little bit more competitive. So they only have about a 30% um, admission rate for internal applicants. So again, I really encourage students to um, do a little bit of research. Um, I know Aubrey has listed a website there um, earlier with all of our majors. And so if you're interested in the capacity constrained major, I do encourage you all to check that out. Um, now, I am going to talk a little bit more about listing majors on your application. So for those of you who may have already started the coalition application and have gone through those UW questions, um, you may have found that we do list both a first and second choice major. We just want to know, what are you interested in? Um, there are a few programs that we do admit freshmen directly, um, and all students need to do in order to be considered is list that major as their first choice. So there are a couple programs that I do want to speak a little bit more specifically about. Um, computer science and computer engineering are part of our direct to major for the Allen School of Computer Science and Computer Engineering. Um, this is a major, or these are majors that we admit a majority of our class freshman direct. So if you're interested in computer science or computer engineering, it's going to be really important that you do list that as your first choice so that we can consider you for that direct admission. We also have direct uh, admission, uh, direct to college admission for our College of Engineering. So again, all students need to do in order to be considered for this is list an engineering major or engineering undeclared as their first choice on their application. Um, if a student is admitted direct to college for the College of Engineering, they'll be admitted as engineering undeclared. Um, they'll start taking their prerequisites, exploring all of the different engineering disciplines we offer, as well as working with an advisor. And typically around the end of their freshman year, they'll go through an internal placement process into one of the engineering disciplines. Um, with students being admitted direct to college, they are guaranteed an engineering major. However, we cannot always guarantee first choice. So if you're a student who isn't uh, quite sure which engineering major you want to go into, um, this is a great option for you so that you can explore all those different programs. Um, now, I do want to mention with computer science, computer engineering, and all of our other engineering majors, again, these are programs that we admit a majority of our class freshmen direct. So it's going to be really important that you do list that as your first choice on your application. If there are other majors that you're considering or that you would like to study at the UW, you can always list a second choice major. But again, please remember that second choice does not have consideration for direct admission. It is only your first choice major. There's one other major that I do want to touch on really briefly, and that is our business major. Um, we do admit about a third of the class freshman direct um, to our Foster School of Business. Again, all students need to do is list business as their first choice um, for that direct consideration. Um, and if students are admitted to the UW but not admitted direct to business, they still have an opportunity to come, complete the prerequisites, and apply internally um, through that standard admissions pathway. And really, a majority of our students who graduate from the business school are coming through that standard admissions pathway. Um, so again, those are a couple majors that we do offer direct admission to, and I really encourage students to look online to learn a little bit more about those processes. The last thing I want to mention here is that if you are a student who's not quite sure what you want to study, maybe you're interested in a couple different programs, you can always list pre-major, which is just our fancy word for undeclared or undecided. 
Great. Thanks so much, Kelsey. Um, so we've talked about the different kinds of majors as well as how they may be taken into consideration as part of our application review process. Uh, but you're probably thinking, how do I indicate my first and second choice major? So you will do so within the UW application. Um, we are on the coalition application. And the coalition application is kind of split into two parts. You have the profile section and then the UW question section. Once you complete the profile, then you can move on to the UW question section. And that's where you're, you will report your first and second choice major. Um, so as you can see listed here, um, you can choose your program, full list of programs listed here for the University of Washington. So go ahead and indicate your first choice major here. Um, moving on to the second slide, you can see that um, you'll have an overview of the major and a little bit more information. So when you're filling out the application, it's a quick way to learn a little bit more about those programs that you're potentially indicating as your first choice major interest. Um, on our website, again, lots more in-depth information if you want to dig in further. So for example, here we listed aquatic and fishery science as our first choice major and a little bit overview of the program. Um, moving on to the next slide, um, you can see here that uh, there's a quick little overview of what it means to list aquatic and fishery sciences as your first choice major. Um, because this does not directly admit freshmen, um, as it mentions here, if you're admitted, you'll be assigned pre-major status. So um, you can come into the UW and pursue that major, but you are not committed and locked into that major. So welcome to pursue other pathways. Um, but again, that information is going to be included every time you indicate your first choice major listed here. Um, the last part I want to cover here is indicating your second choice major. So we will ask a question, would you be willing to study major other than your first choice? If you are open to considering another major besides your first choice major, we'd encourage you to indicate that on the application as it can be taken into consideration as part of our holistic review process. So if you are interested in being considered for that, if you're interested in studying a second choice major, potentially be sure to click yes on the box and then indicate that second choice major here. So um, quick steps there right at the start of the of questions section of the coalition application, but hope that helps to paint the full picture about how to indicate that on the application. Great. Thanks, guys. Thanks for giving us those overviews of the types of majors available at the University of Washington. We really wanted to spend time this evening answering your questions as the audience. So thank you for your questions that you submitted in advance and as you submitted them throughout our presentation this evening. One thing that I do want to clarify based on some of the questions that we're receiving in the Q&A, again, the vast majority of programs available at the University of Washington are not offering direct admission. So most of our students are coming in as a pre-major student of some sort, meaning that they're gonna to come to the university, fulfill their prerequisites, or meet the requirements for their specific major and apply to that program or work with their academic advisor to declare that program if it's an open major. So we did talk a little bit more about the specifics for some of those programs that do offer direct admission, like computer science, computer engineering, the other engineering majors, and business administration. But again, the vast majority of our students do come in as a pre-major student of some sort and apply to their program or work with their academic advisor to declare that program after they're already on our campus. We're gonna jump into some questions. Again, we wanna spend time answering your questions this evening. So the first question I'm going to ask is actually not regarding major. It was one of the most popular questions that were submitted prior to the event tonight. And Kelsey, will you give me a little bit more information um, about the holistic review? The question is, because SAT and ACT scores are not required, what field of the application will be most focused on? So can you share with us just an overview of holistic review and how not requiring ACT or SAT scores will impact that review this year? Yes, happy to. Um, so at the University of Washington, as Aubrey mentioned, we do do holistic review. So that means we look at a multitude of factors within each application. Um, historically, SAT, ACT scores have just been one of the many things that we're looking at. Um, but within holistic review, we, we like to think of it in, in two pillars or two parts, um, the academic preparation and performance, which includes um, looking at the types of classes you're taking, the rigor of your curriculum, uh, looking at your academic grade trend, uh, as well as your senior year schedule. 
And again, we're going to get all of that information from um, your coalition profile, the self-reported course grid. And then on the other side of that, we are looking at more of those personal achievements and characteristics. Um, so looking at your activities and experiences, seeing what you're committing a significant amount of time to, or maybe what have you had leadership positions in or had more responsibility in, as well as your essay component. So um, there are two essays, and those are found in the UDAV specific portion of the application. And with these essays, we just really want to know more about you. So telling us about maybe any obstacles or adversity you face, uh, maybe speaking to a specific cultural awareness, whatever it is, we really just want to know you. Um, and as Aubrey mentioned, there's a multitude of things that we look at within that review process because we really want to make sure that students who are coming to the UW are not only going to be set up for academic success, but are also ultimately going to be a good fit on our campus as well. Great. Thanks, Kelsey. The next question I'm going to ask to you, Joe. If you do not get direct admission to computer science, can I be considered for admission to one of the engineering programs if I listed as my second choice? So can, can you tell us a little bit more about how we consider first and second choice major in regard to that direct admissions process? Yeah, for sure. Thanks, Aubrey. So um, in terms of our admissions process here at UW, uh, we actually only take into consideration uh, for direct admission your first choice major. So unfortunately, we're not able to consider you for your second choice. Um, in regards to if you're interested in engineering. Um, so listing that down on the application to UW um, as a second choice, uh, we will not be able to consider you for direct admission into that program. Um, so I would encourage you, if you do have an interest in a second choice that's outside of engineering, and one of the 180 major programs that we have to offer here at UW, um, I would encourage you to list that down as a second choice on the application so we can consider your other interests as well. Great, thanks, Joe. Ben, the next question's for you. Is pre-med considered a major? Do I need to pick a minor as well? Yeah, it's a good question. So pre-med is not a major. Um, pre-med is more of a, a set of resources and support systems here at UW for students who are interested in pursuing medical school, dental school, or a wide variety of post-grad opportunities in the field of health. Um, so students can major in anything across those 180 different majors here at UW and still access and um, use some of those pre-health advising resources at UW. So that can be meeting with an advisor to identify the classes you need to complete for your specific field you're pursuing. Um, it could be learning more about what kind of opportunities there are outside the classroom, research, internships, volunteer shadowing that medical schools are potentially looking for. Um, so lots of great resources there for students who are interested in pre-med. Um, and again, you could major in just about anything here and still pursue that pathway. Great. Kelsey, next question is coming to you. Should you talk about the major or field you want to pursue in your personal statement or essays or keep it more general? Great question. Um, so with the essays, we do have, I don't want to say too specific, but we do have a prompt that we want students to write to. So our, our personal statement, which is a maximum of 650 words, we do ask students to either tell us a story that demonstrates or help to shape their character. And in our shorter answer, which is a maximum of 300 words, we do ask students um, to tell us about the communities that they're a part of or the communities that have shaped them and how would they potentially add to the diversity on the University of Washington's campus. So if students feel that they talking about their major, their interest fits into one of those I say prompts, they are more than welcome to talk about it, but um, do keep in mind that with those essays, we are wanting to know other things about you that we're not gonna get from other aspects or other parts of, their, of your application. Um, I do also want to note too, that we have um, an additional, additional space or additional information section. So if you feel that there are important things for us to know about you, you can always put them in that portion as well. Um, so hopefully that answered your question. If it fits in the prompts, you can absolutely talk about it. If not, um, it's, you know, we just want to know more about you. So letting us um, know those things in your essay components. Great. 
Joe, can you talk a little bit more about how students can double major at the UW and when would they work with um, their academic advisor to start that process of indicating a double major? Yeah, so some students are able to double major here at the University of Washington. Um, it really depends, I think, on which program you're planning to go into here at UW. Um, some of our majors here on campus, um, it is pretty difficult for you to plan around uh, potentially getting into a double major program. Um, but if you are interested in double majoring, you can actually work with your academic advisor um, right when you get on campus to, to let them know that you're interested in pursuing potentially multiple major programs. And so we'd encourage you to, to you know, have that conversation with them early on. That way you can start uh, planning uh, potentially what you know what program uh, needs and uh, prerequisites are needed for admission into a specific major program uh, because some programs on here like we covered earlier have more requirements than others um, so you want to definitely speak with them early on during your career at the UW. Um, if you're not able to double major that's okay too you can also take other classes in that, ma in that major area potentially if you register for them um, and then there's also opportunities to minor and we have a whole lot of minors as well on top of majors here at UW so um, there are excellent options here and the education at UW is so interdisciplinary that we encourage students to definitely explore those different options. Great, thanks. Ben, can I apply directly through the UW website or do I have to apply via the coalition? Yeah, for the freshman application, our one and only platform is through the coalition application. Um, again, there's the profile section, that's general information that um, like all colleges you apply to through the coalition would see. Um, then be sure to list UW on your college list there and that will allow you to access the UW questions. Um, so those open up, uh, those will open up if say if you're like a junior or sophomore, opens up September 1st, your senior year. Our one and only deadline is November 15th. So UW questions, that's where you'll see the first and second choice major as well as um, those essays that Kelsey referenced to, um, personal statement show response will be in there, there as well. So one and only way to apply as a freshman is through the coalition application. Awesome. And we should note for seniors, the coalition application is open now. You have access to every piece of the coalition application. So please, if you're a senior, make sure that you're starting that coalition application soon. Our application deadline is November 15th. We do not participate in early action or early decision. So November 15th is our only application deadline. And then you would be notified of your admissions decision March 1st through the 15th of your senior year. Kelsey, the next question's for you. Does choosing a second choice major lower your chances of getting into a direct admission major as your first choice? Great question. And no, it does not. Um, again, as we have mentioned, I think both myself and Joe have mentioned um, that we only consider first choice in terms of those direct admission programs. Uh, listing a second choice, again, just indicates to us that there are other programs and other majors that you would be interested in pursuing at the University of Washington. So listing a second choice will not hurt um, your chances of being considered for that direct admission first choice. Great, thanks Kelsey. The next question that we have is going to be, let me find a good one, the next good one. Can both my first and second choice majors be capacity constrained majors or do I need to pick an open minimum requirement major for my second choice? Joe, do you wanna tackle that question for us? Yeah, that's a fantastic question. Um, thanks, Aubrey. For uh, your application, you can indicate whatever interests you have, obviously. So if it is a your first choice is capacity constraint and your second choice is capacity constraint, um, you're more than welcome to pursue that um, and put it down as your first and second choice on the application. Um, we just want to know essentially what you're interested in pursuing at the UW. So um, feel free to list them down. Great, thank you. So Ben, the next question for, is going to be for you. How do running start students apply to the University of Washington? What does that application process look like for a running start student? 
Yeah, so Running Start students, um, and for those of you who may not be familiar, this is like a dual enroll en enrollment program in the state of Washington where students are taking classes at a local Washington State Community College, um, com earning college credit while also completing high school graduation requirements. So um, those students, they will still be applying as freshman applicants through the coalition application. So even though you're earning that college credit while still in high school, still applying as a freshman. <clears throat> Um, students would not be considered transfer students um, until they take college credit the fall quarter after they graduate from high school. Um, so Running Start students applying through the coalition application still. Um, when you're self-reporting your coursework, um, be sure to indicate that you're taking um, college classes. Um, I don't want to get too in-depth here, but there's lots of good information on our website um, that shows you how to list Running Start credit on the application. We'd love to see students challenge themselves through rigorous coursework via AP, IB, Running Start, just a few examples. So be sure to list that on the application. Um, You'll likely be able to bring in a good chunk, if not all of that running start credit to the University of Washington, and that can help contribute towards graduation requirements, those UW areas of knowledge, or potentially prepare you for a major. So um, yeah, just a little overview there, but again, if you're a running start student, applying as a freshman through the coalition application. Great, thanks, Ben. And as Ben mentioned, there is more information on our website, admit.washington.edu, and there's actually a specific section for Running Start students as well. And I'm seeing a couple questions this evening about how to self-report coursework, so I wanted to provide a quick plug. We do have coalition webinars available via Zoom throughout the application cycle. So from now until November 15th, we do have coalition webinars available. And you can find the dates for those and register for those under the apply section of the freshman portion of our, of our website. So you will be able to hop on a Zoom webinar with us where we will demonstrate self-reporting coursework as well if you have questions about how to do that. I'm going to answer a few quick questions here so that way I don't have to kick it around to different panelists. These are things that I can just answer real quick. So where can I find the prerequisites for majors on the website? You can actually view prerequisites and admissions information for each major on the departmental website. So if you go to the UW Psychology website or UW Neuroscience website, you can actually find more information about their admissions process for current UW students and a list of those prerequisites or requirements to apply to the program as well. So each departmental website and each major will have that information available on their website. And just to clarify, this web webinar is being recorded and will be posted on the UW website. Yes, this webinar is being recorded. It will be posted on the admissions website with a link. And you can actually log back in with the same information that you used to access this presentation initially. So you can just log back into this platform at any time to view this video or any of our other videos that we have recorded and available live as well. Okay, Kelsey, does the UW require the coalition essay? Great question. Um, so there is the coalition profile essay um, that has the options of five different prompts, and that is not required for the University of Washington. We actually do not import that section at all. Um, so unless you're applying to other schools using the coalition that do require that essay, if you're only applying to UW, you don't need to complete that essay component. Again, the essays that the UW requires will be found in the UW-specific questions of the application. So again, don't need to complete the coalition profile essay if you're only applying to UW, only uh, complete if there are potentially other schools that you're applying through the coalition that require that component. Great. Joe, how and when will I know if I got admitted directly to my program? Yeah, um, that's a great question. So you'll know essentially in your admission letter to the University of Washington if you are directly admitted into any of the direct options for your specific major program and that you hopefully indicated as your first choice on the application to UW. Um, our decisions come out this next year, March 1st through the 15th. So uh, mark your calendars out for that uh, two week period. Uh, also, there is no rhyme or reason on how we <laughs> send out decisions. So it, come, it could come out on the 14th, it could come out on the 1st, it really depends. Um, but uh, just 
be aware that uh, that is our notification period and you should, should hear back from majors by then. Great, thanks Joe. Ben, how can we find out which majors are capacity constrained, minimum requirements and open majors? Yeah, uh, so on our website, we have a great guide that lists out all 180 different majors as well as some additional pathways within those majors. So super informative and learning about all the different options at UW as well as the um, kind of sub options within those majors. Um, there's a nice guide there uh, with visuals that shows which ones are open, minimum requirements and capacity constraints. So um, nice visual aid there to go through those quickly, um, determine what kind of majors each one is. Um, and again, clicking on those majors there, as a few of us have talked about, um, and we'll take you to the website, um, learn lots more information about the admissions requirements, admissions pathways, um, where you can reach out for more information too. Great, thanks Ben. And Kelsey, the next question is for you. I'm going to preface this real quick. Um, if you can just give an overview we also have a video and a Washington Wednesday series about this topic as well. So what is the UW honors application and what does that process look like to apply to interdisciplinary honors? So Kelsey, if you can give a quick overview um, and then students, if you want more detailed information, I would encourage you to refer to the Washington Wednesday that was specifically geared towards the UW honors program. Thanks, Aubrey. So the UW Honors Program is, uh, we offer the Interdisciplinary Honors Program. So it's a great option for students who are maybe looking for um, a little bit more of an interdisciplinary curriculum, um, as well as maybe finding a smaller community within the larger UW campus. Um, again, as Aubrey mentioned, um, the video from another Washington Wednesday um, does go into more detail as well as, well as hearing from faculty as well as students about that specific program. Uh, but in terms of how to apply to the Interdisciplinary Honors Program, um, for freshmen uh, in the UW section questions, there'll be a question that pops up and asks if you're interested in applying to the Interdisciplinary Honors Program. If you select yes for that, um, more questions will populate. Um, I believe there are two to three essay questions. Um, if you're curious as to what those questions are prior to starting the, the application, um, you can find those essay questions on our website. I believe it's under academics and honors. Um, you can also go to the UW Honors website um, to learn more information about the essay questions as well as what they look for in competitive applicants. Um, if you're just curious to learn more about the honors program, again, there's a Washington Wednesday session, but their website has a lot of really great information, including course descriptions, um, as well as uh, student profiles um, and students that you can reach out to to learn more about that program. Um, so. It's a great program. If that's something you're interested, I really encourage students to check it out. Great. Then for admissions, is it okay if we don't remember exactly what grades we got in what classes? Do we have any wiggle room in self-reporting grades or does that be the exact score we got? Can you talk to us a little bit more about how students should self-report those grades? Yeah, so when self-reporting your grades, I say, um, you know, make sure you're inputting it exactly how it appears on your high school transcript. So if you're a senior working on your application right now or preparing to fill out that application, um, a great step to take is reaching out to your high school, making sure you get a, a, your hands a copy of on that high school transcript so you can enter those exact course titles and the exact grades you received in those classes. So. Um, that's a good step to take. And again, we don't require, we don't look at transcripts as part of our review process. We're just gonna be looking at that self-reported coursework in those grades for ninth through 11th grade, as well as make sure you're inputting your 12th grade coursework schedule on that coalition application. So, um, yeah, so make sure those grades are accurate um, as they appear on your transcript. Great, thanks Ben. I know folks are hopping in and out of the presentation. So a couple questions that we've gotten that I just wanna make sure is absolutely clear. Our application deadline is November 15th. Freshman applicants for autumn 2021 need to apply by November 15th by 11.59 p.m. Pacific time. Do not wait until 11.59 p.m. to submit your application. That is the regular decision deadline. We do not participate in early action or early decision. So one notification period, at, one application period at UW, 
deadline, November 15th, and then we will notify you of your admissions decision March 1st through the 15th of your senior year. Joe, next question's for you. If you completed 90 units through college classes, but are in running start, would you still not be a transfer student? So are you categorized as a transfer student based on the number of credits that you've earned? Yeah, that's a great question. Thanks, Aubrey. Um, no, so you will not be considered a transfer student to UW. Um, based off of just already completing 90 credits, you'd actually be considered still a freshman applicant um, to the University of Washington. Um, if you end up, you know, deciding to stay at your community college for that fall, after you graduate from high school, that's when you'd be considered a transfer applicant to the University of Washington. Um, but for now, um, if you plan to apply with the rest of the freshman class and you're a senior this year and you're duly enrolled and you've already earned 90 credits, you are still considered a freshman applicant to the university. Great, thanks so much. We have another timeline question that I will address real quickly here. If I'm accepted at the University of Washington, how much time do I have before I commit to register? So at the University of Washington, we adhere to the May 1st national response date. So you will receive your admissions decision between March 1st and March 15th of your senior year. And then we ask you to confirm your enrollment at the UW by May 1st. So you have about six weeks between the time that you receive your admissions decision until when you need to confirm your enrollment at the University of Washington. Clarifying question here, Kelsey, for you about the coalition essay. Does the coalition essay impact one's application at all? Yes, um, as I talked about earlier, the holistic review, we look at a multitude of factors, um, which does include not only the academics um, that we get from your course grid that then talked about earlier, um, but we do also read all of your essays as well as your activities and experiences um, and your honors and distinctions um, because we really want to make sure that, that students who are coming to the UW um, are going to be a good fit as well as um, set up for academic success. So what you write in your essays can make a difference. Um, again, we want to get to know you, um, so we do look at every component of the, uh, of the application. Great, thanks. Ben, we have a question. We're getting a lot of questions specific to the application process, so we're gonna cover a few more of those and then we'll transition back to questions about majors as well. But we wanna make sure that we're addressing your questions this evening and make sure that you are ready to complete your admissions application and ready to go. So Ben, does UW prioritize admission of students in Washington State over out of state students? Can you talk to us a little bit more about um, our admissions priorities? Yeah, so uh, as a in public institution in the state of Washington, we do give priority to Washington residents. Um, this past year, our admin rate for Washington residents was about 63%, um, and for U.S. non-resident students, I believe it was um, right around 55% or so. Um, so on our website, we have more information about those admin rates for um, Washington residents, U.S. non-residents, international applicants, um, as well as the mid-50 percentiles for uh, high school GPA and test scores on there as well. So um, yes, as a state institution in Washington, we do give priority to residents, um, but we admit students from uh, all across the country, all across the world um, as part of our review process. Great, thank you. Joe, we have some questions pertaining to ACT and SAT scores. So can you talk to us a little bit more about the requirement for ACT and SAT scores this year and how those we use during the holistic review? Yeah, so uh, SAT and ACT scores are no longer required for admission to the University of Washington. So um, you can send them in, but they will not part, be part of our review process uh, when we review applications. So um, there is no requirement. We have gone test optional this year and for the foreseeable future. Um, so there is no need to send in test scores and it will not disadvantage you in any way if you do not send any test scores. We know that there are a lot of barriers right now to access to testing and this includes you know, access to the SAT or the ACT. Um, so we don't want to um, disadvantage any students that don't have any access to any of those tests either. Um, and this also goes for any of your AP or IB exam scores and SAT subject tests. We are not looking or reviewing those 
for admissions purposes as well. So you don't have to send in those scores if you've already taken those tests. But they are not part of the review, so no, no worries here. Great. Thanks, Joe. I wanted you to be able to share some good news with our students tonight. <laughs> students, if you have more questions about test scores, we do have an entire FAQ on our admissions website as well. So we have a COVID-19 admissions FAQ and an entire page dedicated towards test score, scores as well. So then my next question is for you. If I'm applying direct to major for computer science and have supplemental materials, for example, a link, a link to a computer program I create, created. Is there anywhere that I could submit this? Yeah, that's a good question. So everything we need for um, your admissions application at UW, as well as to consider you for um, direct admission to majors is just gonna be what's in the coalition application. So we don't take into consideration um, any other additional supplemental materials, um, such as letters of recommendation or say a link to a website, for example. Um, we're gonna be looking at your high school coursework, your performance in those courses, as well as some of those essay portions that Kelsey talked about. Um, that's all the information that we will use and we need in order to make admission decisions for UW as well as direct admission to majors too. Great, thanks Ben. And going back to the question that Joe answered about test scores, um, again, those will not be used in the holistic review of your application. Those also will not be used for direct admission consideration or scholarship consideration at the UW too. So again, no negative impacts for not submitting your ACT or SAT scores. Kelsey, the next question is for you. Um, it's about kind of the results after a student applies for admission. Can you talk to us a little bit more? The question is, does the UW waitlist applicants? So you can talk to us about the outcomes of the admissions application. Yes, I can. Um, so the UW does um, release a couple different decisions. Um, we do have admit decisions, uh, we do have deny decisions, and we do also have waitlist decisions. Um, so if students are invited to the waitlist, they do need to indicate that they are interested in being considered if we do move um, to the waitlist and invite students off of that. Um, one thing to note is that for our waitlist, um, students do need to indicate their interest or confirm their spot on the waitlist by a certain date. Um, I believe it's usually around April. Um, and then uh, if we are inviting students off the waitlist um, and into admission to the UW, um, typically that can happen anywhere um, between uh, May 15th through August 1st. Um, so just know it can be a bit of a window there if you are invited to the waitlist and you do confirm your spot. Okay, great, thank you. And I think I may have skipped a Joe somewhere in here. So didn't mean to do that in, on purpose, Joe, but next question is coming to you. Is CS direct to major looking for students ha who have specific CS experience? What other qualities is CS direct admission looking for? Yeah, that's a great question. So for uh, computer science uh, direct students, um, you do not need any prior programming experience for admission into their specific program. So it is based primarily on the holistic review assessment of students. And usually having a strong academic background in multiple areas will make you more competitive. So um, taking you know, your advantage of uh, college level coursework, like your AP, IB, uh, dual enrollment coursework, honors curriculum, uh, Cambridge, any of those um, you know, college level prep classes and doing well in those classes, um, it makes you more competitive in, I think, their review process. So, um, and then on top of that, they are looking also at your personal achievements and characteristics. So if you've done anything uh, notable and, uh, you know, things that you'd like to talk about in the application in terms of activities, um, that does make a student more competitive also for CS. Um, so essentially it isn't based off of just meet it, having, a, you know, Java 1 under your belt or Java 2, but, um, you know, doing well overall as a student uh, makes you more competitive. Um, and uh, I also, I always encourage students really to speak specifically with the computer science program um, about how competitive their application process is and what, what they are looking for because, um, you know, they have the best answer, I think, on what, what makes a competitive uh, CS student. Um, so I always, I would encourage you also to reach out to them um, and to their department specifically. Um, but essentially that's what they're looking at. And so, um, 
yeah, uh, that's my answer for you. <laughs> Great, Joe. And as Joe mentioned, the computer science program, the Allen School, does have information sessions that they host as well. So you're welcome to reach out to them to connect to learn more about some of the specific questions you've asked this evening about internships and research opportunities. They'll really be able to speak the best to those specific areas. Um, we are kind of generalists in our office. We know a little bit about everything, um, but we definitely are not necessarily an academic advisor for some of these specific programs. So if you have questions about the department specifically, feel free to reach out to them as well. Then the next question is coming to you. Again, it's about the application process. So does the UW not require transcripts when I apply for admission? And can I submit mid-year grade reports? Yeah, so we do not ask for transcripts. Um, again, all we need in order to evaluate your academics throughout high school, it's all going to be in the coalition application. So self-reporting all that coursework. Um, again, ninth, 10th, 11th grade, you're going to be putting in your grades. For 12th grade, be sure to put in what classes you're taking your senior year, as we do want to see you challenging yourself and working towards completing caters at the very minimum, or your college academic distribution requirements is um, what I mean when I say caters. Um, you know, for first semester, for example, you could put down that your classes are, um, you know, in progress and second semester not yet started. So that's kind of what we're going to look at instead of seeing a transcript. Um, as well, additionally, for, for mid-year reports or mid-year transcripts, um, we, we, don't, um, we don't require students to send those in either. Um, you know, if we need any additional information or need like uh, additional clarification on a student's academic record in high school, we'll always reach out to you if we need that additional information. Great, thank you. Kelsey, the next question is for you. If we have a reason for our grades or additional context to provide, how should we best input that through our application? That's a really wonderful question. Um, there is an additional space, um, additional comments or additional information in the UW section of the application. Um, I believe both of those spaces have about 300 words. Um, and so that's a really great place for you to let us know about things that may have affected your academic performance. Um, we don't assume anything when we read your application. So if there have been um, things that have caused you to maybe have a dip in your grade, or maybe uh, cause you to have some bumps in your academics, let us know about those types of things. So um, if maybe you got sick for an extended period of time, maybe um, things happened due to COVID or if there's been other natural disasters that have affected you, feel free to let us know in that additional comments, um, additional space section. I will say one thing that is new this year too is um, in the coalition in the personal information section, they have entered or they have um, added a section that is specifically addressing any natural disasters such as the fires or um, COVID and there are um, some options you can select as well as a text box. So if there are things that you want to elaborate on um, due to those circumstances, um, please, again, please let us know because we just want more information um, if there have been raising reasons or extenuating circumstances um, as to your academic performance. Great. Joe, we're getting a lot of questions um, about prerequisites for majors that students may need to fulfill in high school. So are there any prerequisites for majors that students would need to complete in high school for any particular majors at the UW? No, there are no prerequisites that students need to uh, meet in order for them to be admitted into a specific program that they have to take during high school. Um, the UW, though, has general requirements, which are also known as our college academic distribution requirements. And these are set forth by the state of Washington. So they are the minimum requirements that are needed for entrance. Um, I usually tell students that we do need uh, about two years of a world language completed. Our most competitive applicants, though, usually will reach a third or fourth level of a world language. And then we also need a minimum of Algebra two taken uh, for admission purposes. Um, our most competitive applicants do take the higher levels of math, like pre-calculus or calculus. So um, meeting those requirements will get you into UW, um, but there are no specific requirements that are needed for entrance into a program taken in high school. Great, thank you. I'm going to address a couple 
quick questions. We've had some questions about application requirements and things that we consider. So just to clarify, the University of Washington does not review or consider letters of recommendation. We also do not consider demonstrated interest. We also do not consider legacy through our admissions process as well. So there are no additional documents or requirements that you need to send us, like letters of recommendation or transcripts. Our application um, checklist is pretty simple. It's your coalition application and your application fee. And if you have more questions about documents or what to submit to the UW, you can find that on our website as well. Again, this recording will, this panel will be recorded and posted on our website. And you can also log back into this platform to watch this panel at another time as well. Okay. All right, Ben, we're gonna stick with transcript questions for you for one more moment. Do international students need to send in official transcripts? Uh, yes, we do ask for transcripts for students who've completed um, some or all of high school um, out, outside the U.S. if uh, their curriculum is not part of a U.S. style curriculum. So a um, little bit more information on our website specifically again about how students should be like self-reporting coursework um, coming from different curriculum styles. But um, we use those uh, those additional transcripts for students who are coming from outside um, the forms of education that we're familiar with reviewing um, just so that we have all the information that we need um, when reviewing those applications and can understand the grades, the grading scale, um, as well as the courses that students completed. Great. Joe, we're going to come back to you. Um, the question is, if I list computer science as my first choice, can I list computer engineering as my second choice? Or will that not be considered because it is direct to major? Yeah, so uh, thank you, Aubrey, for that question. Uh, for computer science, uh, you're, you know, you're more than welcome to list down both if you'd like um, on the application. However, um, you only will be considered for direct entry into computer science, um, the computer science program. Um, I would say, though, that if you are admitted into computer science, that's also computer science and computer engineering. Um, so that is direct admission into the Allen School, which houses both programs. And uh, you're actually able to possibly switch between both programs. So um, we, will also, we always encourage students, if they have an interest outside of um, CS or CE, uh, that they would probably want to list that down as a second choice on the application. But um, there is an ability for you to switch between both if you have an interest in both. Great. Kelsey, let's talk about nursing. Can you talk to us about the admissions process for nursing at the UW? Do we offer direct admission for freshman applicants to the School of Nursing? Great question, Aubrey. Um, so the University of Washington does not offer freshman direct nursing. If students are interested in nursing and they list nursing as their first choice on their application, if they're admitted to the UW, they'll be admitted as pre-nursing. Um, typically within their first two years is when they will complete their nursing prerequisites. Um, it is a capacity constrained major, so there are specific um, admissions requirements um, for nursing. It does include um, a handful of classes as well as I believe some experience hours. Um, and then they will need to apply apply internally to the nursing program. Um, now I did mention nursing is capacity constrained and I will say it is one of our more competitive uh, capacity constrained programs. They have about a 15% um, acceptance rate into the program. So if you are dead set on nursing, if that's the only thing that you want to study, um, the university may not be the best fit because we cannot guarantee your admission into that major. If you are wanting to have the UW experience and you're open to, you want nursing, but you're also open to other degrees related to healthcare, the University of Washington is going to be a great place for you. So long answer, but we do not have a freshman direct nursing program. Great. Thanks, Kelsey. And I know we're running close to time this evening, so um, I'm going to have Ben recap really quickly the three types of majors available at and and then we'll see if we have enough time for a couple more questions as well so Ben will you recap the three types of majors available at UW please 
Yeah, yeah, of course. So uh, we have you know open majors, minimum requirement, and the capacity constrained majors. Open majors are ones that students can declare at any time um, after starting at University of Washington. Minimum requirement majors, students will complete um, you know a specific set of prerequisite courses, and once they meet those minimum requirements, they can be admitted to that major without additional screening. Um, capacity constrained majors, those are the ones where students will complete those prerequisite courses, um, and then the application process may include some additional components such as like an essay. Um, um, for example, um, and, you know, uh, capacity constrained majors that can't admit all students to the program. Um, so as Kelsey mentioned throughout the presentation, lots of variety in terms of admit rates for those capacity constrained majors. Some of them admit most of students, some of them are going to be very competitive for admission. But those are kind of our three different categories there for majors at the UW. And uh, again, lots more information on the website. If you search UW majors, or University of Washington majors, I'm a great guide and more information there about all of those. Great, thanks, Ben. And I've actually changed the slides back to one of the first slides that we shared this evening that includes the full list of majors available at the UW. So I want to share this list with you this evening because we have gotten a lot of questions about how do I know what type of major X, Y, or Z program is? How can I learn more about my program? So if you go to the website listed on this slide, you can actually filter that list again by type of major. You can filter that list by different areas of interest. So that'll get you pointed in the right direction. And then you can go to the specific departmental website after that as well. Um, but one, one question that we got earlier that I want to make sure that we address, and I will send it to Joe for this one. So Joe, the question is, what if I'm not admitted to my first choice major? What advice would you have for a student who's attending the UW and applying to their major, and if they don't get admitted to that first choice major? Yeah, um, thank you uh, for that question, Aubrey. Um, if you're not admitted into your first choice major, there are a variety of um, pathways, at least, that you'll need to cross, at least for possibly going into a second choice major. Um, usually, when uh, students come to the University of Washington, uh, they meet with an academic advisor, and uh, they will kind of list out their interests and uh, different different uh, majors that they might possibly want to do. And so um, they can currently plan major programs out while they're attending the university. So um, if you have an interest in business, and for example, if you're not admitted into business, a lot of students will end up thinking about applying to the economics degree program at UW. Um, so there are you know, several other majors that will also take you uh, while you're here. So you know, there's, there's other major options out there if you're not admitted directly or admitted, excuse me, into um, your first choice, there are still options for you. Um, it's just going to take a little bit more work um, and you'll need to really speak, I think, with your academic advisor once you're here um, to plan out that degree. Thanks, Joe. Appreciate it. So a couple things just to wrap up this evening. Again, this presentation has been recorded, so you can refer back to it at any point. We also are hosting coalition webinars. I know we got a lot of questions this evening about the coalition application, how to apply to the University of Washington. So I really would encourage you to sign up for one of our coalition webinars. You can find those registration links on our website. That's admit.washington.edu. And that's under the freshman application section. There's actually a drop down menu that will say application webinars. So you can register for one of those webinars and we will do live demonstrations of self-reported coursework. I would also encourage you to connect with your admissions counselor as well. Each of you have an admissions counselor assigned by high school or by state. So if you have questions, you're more than welcome to reach out to your admissions counselor. The four of us this evening all serve different students in different high schools across the country. So feel free to reach out to us if you have any questions. And the slide that's up right now does have our website and our general office email address as well. So please don't hesitate to reach out to us if you have any questions. Thank you for joining us this evening. And we will have another Washington Wednesday next week. And that program is sharing more information about the three University of Washington campuses. So keep your eyes out for an invitation for that program as well. But thank you again for joining us tonight. Wonderful questions. Thanks for spending part of your evening with us. And we look forward to seeing you again soon. Thank you.